Ryzen 5 will not, okay, will not outperform Intel's modern i5 lineup in modern gaming. Okay, it's a bold statement, but it will not happen. Here's a short and sweet explanation as to why. AMD's already confirmed Ryzen 5 specifications, consisting of two CCXs, those are clusters of four Ryzen cores. What this means, since we know the 5 series will only have six and four core variants, is that one or two cores within each complex will be turned off, essentially. Think of these as cores that didn't pass the mark. But what this also means is that these Ryzen 5 CPUs are essentially Ryzen 7 CPUs from an architectural standpoint. This is bad news for gamers who were looking for i5 and i7 counterparts on the red team, since IPC isn't expected to change much at all. You see, most games utilize anywhere from two to four cores, with very few going beyond that. Battlefield 1 is a very rare exception, but Ryzen 7 couldn't even keep up there. AMD tried to make it seem as though the 1800X stood a chance at this event here, but at 4K, which was the resolution of choice, CPU load is dramatically reduced. You'll find that as we approach 1080p, the 8-core Intel equivalent takes the cake. Just barely, and that's not to take away from the price to performance benefit of Ryzen 7, but the point I'm trying to make is that how on earth is it supposed to beat an even higher tallied Kaby Lake CPU? I'm talking specifically about the i7-7700K, but you're more than welcome to extrapolate this through overclockable i5s from Kaby and Sky families as well. Remember, IPC is a big deal. If you ask me what I've seen so far in my own tests and just tests from others that I do trust, the 1600X will fall in line somewhere around a locked i5 from Intel Kaby Lake. Now I know that sounds too bad to be true, and then you know a lot of the AMD fans are just gonna automatically dislike the video because I just said what I just said, but it's the truth, and you're going to find that out once you start seeing these Ryzen 5 benchmarks roll out. Let me show you a few examples. First up, GTA 5. You can see in 1440p, very high settings, how things are fairly close. The 6700K edges out a narrow win, but drop to 1080p and that lead dramatically improves. This is the nature of CPU scaling. At lower resolutions, the chips with stronger individual cores will pull forward, all other things equal. Now let's throw the 7600K into the mix. This is just a four core, four thread CPU. Boom. Still considerably higher frame rate than the 1700X in 1080p, and this is with all eight cores enabled. I'm emphasizing the 1080p resolution because it's by far the most common resolution in which people game today. Even Witcher 3, which heavily leverages the graphics card, favored ever so slightly the 6700K. I don't have a 7700K in case you're wondering, it's not worth the upgrade from a 67 if you already have one, but you'll see an extra few frames here and there with a newer architecture to only further my point. Now let's play devil's advocate here for a second. Can't you overclock just a bit more CPUs with fewer cores? Isn't it easier to overclock two core CPUs than it is to overclock four core CPUs? The answer in general is yes, you actually can. And in some cases you can turn off cores and say your 5820K or even a 6900K, overclock that CPU just a bit more and edge out a few extra frames. It sounds counterintuitive, but that is how it works in some cases. But I must say it was very difficult pushing the 1700X anywhere above four gigahertz even with four of its eight cores disabled running the latest BIOS. The 1600X is the only CPU in the Ryzen 5 lineup shipping with an out-of-the-box frequency of 4 GHz, which is pretty ballsy if you ask me, but I still wouldn't count on moving it much past that. So why am I telling you this, especially given the hostility in this space? <sighs> I'm trying to dehype the hype. For the first time ever in my YouTube career, I'm trying to prepare you for what you're about to see before you actually see it, and without breaking any NDA, which would be impossible because I didn't sign anything and I don't have any Ryzen 5 CPU on me. And I don't think anybody does at this point. And that's why you're seeing so many, we have Ryzen 5 benchmarks, even though they haven't been released yet. It's because you can actually simulate Ryzen 5 CPUs with Ryzen 7 chips by deactivating cores. They are essentially the exact same things. The exact same dies are being used, but cores are being turned off that didn't pass the mark. The hype is what many use to crush the momentum Ryzen 7 had, even though those CPUs were never intended for gaming. Nobody buys an 8-core 16-thread CPU solely for gaming, period. Ryzen 5 will likely offer better value chips in the gaming space, but don't count on any of them to outperform a comparably priced Intel i5 in modern games. It'll be close, but it won't you know, it won't be a blowout. If you want my two cents, the 1600 seems like a great buy for those concerned with content creation and gaming on a budget, while the 1500X is sure to convince many of those solely interested in gaming, regardless of the resolution. Look, I have no doubt that Ryzen 5 will be a huge success. I want it to be, I want competition, I want to have a tough time choosing between an Intel and an AMD CPU. For the first time in my PC building career, I want that tough decision. The value is insane, it's been AMD's strong suit for 
quite a while, but I wholeheartedly oppose the idea that Ryzen 5 will stomp the blue team competition at the same price point in modern games. I only expect that they'll be very close. But still, it's competition. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down if you think I'm a paid off Intel shill. Oh well, the like to dislike ratio that varies a bit more than usual is actually pretty good for YouTube algorithms, so you're actually doing me a solid there. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more content like this. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us. Thank you.